Hello, um, this technique sample is going to introduce you guys to the new, it is kind of in beta tool currently, um, the AI generated print tool. So uh, make sure you are signed up for the beta option. It's free to do. And um, you're going to test out the um, categories that are listed in the assignment. And we'll see how your print turns out. And we can compare and contrast the similarities and differences um, that we all get using the you know same um, codes basically or similar categories at least so um, you will open up this file that has a hoodie sweatshirt i've already adjusted the print to camo currently um, now i'm going to try a different print so you guys can follow along follow along and see how to use this tool so um, my next print i'm going to do a wallpaper print so i'm going to select my fabric in my object browser. And when I do that, the property editor comes up with all kinds of information. Um, to use the new AI little tool, right now it is a magic wand that's kind of hidden in basic parameters. That's all you get. AI texture generator, right now it's in beta. So I'm gonna click it. You can see um, my last print, I did camo. This is how it turned out. And then I actually did not like the white, so I opened it in Photoshop and I changed it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that too. Okay, so I said chose my fabric. I chose fleece. Um, maybe this time I'll try French terry. Not sure if it matters too much, but I guess you do see the fleece texture in the background, which is kind of cool. So I'm gonna do French terry this time just for fun, for learning purposes. Content type uh, is art or print. I'm just gonna do print. Um, I don't mind if you guys mess around with art and try it, go ahead. Um, and then now for camouflage, let's see, we have a category selection. So, hmm, maybe I'll do stripe this time, possibly. I wonder if I can do it without checking it, I'm not sure. Um, okay, and for pattern size, you can play around with it. I did two. Um, but this time I'm gonna try a wallpaper and I'm gonna add an extra word. I'm gonna add retro. Okay, I hit enter return, which is the same as clicking the generate button. And now AI is working to create that artwork for me. Okay, so it's definitely a stripe, which is kind of cool. Um, if we like it, we can say apply and again, don't forget, you can always change the scale of it as well. There you go, if you want something larger. I think this time, let's see if I can just do select and not choose a specific kind of print. And oh no, it won't let me do it. So what if I do art this time? Art, mm, let's try vintage. And we'll say generate. Okay, it's not exactly what I had in mind, but that's okay. Um, let's see here, let me try it. What if I do retro wallpaper? Maybe I'll add the word stripe here. <laughs> it's kind of neat. Okay, so I guess I will say apply. And yeah, um, there it is. Okay, so um, now if you wanna make any changes, you can open this up in Photoshop um, and I will go ahead and show you guys how to do that. So I'll log out of here right now. And to do it, this is just a flat PNG file. It does not have layers, it's not like Illustrator. So um, you can open this in Photoshop to change it. Um, so let's go ahead. So I'm going to click on, make sure you're clicked on your fabric in the object browser, and then you will find your texture here. Um, and I have this little button that's going to let me open with, and I can say open with Photoshop, or you can do another app as well. And then it's here. So if there's any changes you want to possibly make, if you want to add anything, uh, maybe we just want to change the color. Maybe we don't like the blue. So, um, so use whatever knowledge you have with Illustrator. And I'm gonna hit select color range and I'll try selecting that blue color. That's like fuzziness. Ooh. 
how much blue am I going to get? Um, okay, and let's see here. Image, adjust. You know what? Actually, I'm going to deselect because it's, it's pretty pixelated, actually. Let's try image, adjust. Um, I'm going to do replace color. Okay, I'm going to go get that blue. And let's see how much. Okay, great. So I can play around with the hue. But I just want to change it to something else. Ooh, sometimes it's nice to see saturated just to see what's actually changing. So here I have some options to make it a little bit different, basically. And um, let's see here. When I'm done, you would just say File. Um, actually, I think you can just say File Save, Command S. And it will save it um, as the JPEG, because it was a JPEG, which is neat. So now I can go back to Clo. And I can click the little four squares. And I can need to remember where I saved it. Okay, let's see here. Oops, I'm gonna say cancel. Let me try that again. Oh, it's right here. I was in the folder because um, I saved it on top of it. And I'll just say open. Uh, it didn't really look like it worked. Let me try again because I made it a little darker. So this time I'll just say file save as JPEG. I'll just put it um, on my desktop. Now I'll go to Clo, click, and let's go to desktop. And there it is. There it is. That's the one that I made. Okay, so anyways, I want you to play around with this tool to um, come up with the different print categories so that we can compare and contrast with one another. Um, so far, feedback from this tool is that it doesn't make amazing art that you would actually sell. It's more of just like placeholders as you go and build a line and collection. You have a placeholder that, oh, I want a plaid here, I want a floral here, a geo here, etc. Um, but you know, maybe you could use it and manipulate it in Photoshop, but I just wanted to introduce you guys to this tool and, um, I'm looking forward to seeing how your projects turn out.